So, Chris, thank you for thank you for joining us today. Uh, for those that don't know you, you are our long-standing group uh, accountant uh, and uh, have uh, have looked after us for many years. Um, also joined by Andy Graham, uh, our uh, FD, uh, and basically there's clearly been a lot of uh, initiatives. The government's rolled out a lot of great ideas and how they're going to help us get through this this uh, this crisis. And what we want to do is just dissect those things for because certain things are going to be more relevant to others. So um, why don't we uh, why don't we just start going through that list and uh, and uh, because it's quite a long one. And um, where are we going? Where do we want to start, Andy? You had a you had a you had an agenda. Yes. Um, so we've got quite a list of things, obviously, that have come out recently. I think the best one to probably start with, Chris, is about the job retention scheme. Okay. And um, just to see, really, is is um, how is this going to be accessed? Um, when will the money be available? Uh, and who is actually eligible for this? Um, would you be able to go over the job retention scheme for us in a bit more detail? Yeah, sure. So um, the government brought in a scheme which um, is quite interesting. It's very innovative. If you think that um, the bulk of the population pay basic rate tax at 20%, so most people are paying 20% tax to the government and keep 80%, the new scheme basically is the government is now going to be paying up to 80% of your wages if up to a maximum of £2,500. The main reason is the government realised that if they do nothing, then there won't be any businesses left after COVID-19 has disappeared. So what they're trying to do is bring in a scheme that people may have heard of the term furloughing. Furloughing is basically a temporary absence from work. So what they're saying is that if you have an employee, then you want to keep them as an employee, but you have a period that you haven't got any work for them, you can furlough them. So the first thing is, what is an employee? Well, the employer must have a PAYE scheme and that person, the employee, must be on that scheme as of the 28th of February. Now, don't worry that this year is a leap year. It is 28th of February, which is the date that they have to be a PAYE member of staff. So then what happens is the government have said that we will actually pay up to a maximum of £2,500 or 80% of their salary. The question then is, what is salary? So they've said, well, salary doesn't cover bonuses, commissions, fees. It's the contractual element that you've got in your salary. And um, the furlough period cannot be less than three weeks and cannot be more than three months. So the period starts on the 1st of March and at the moment, the government has said that it will go up to the 31st of May, i.e. three months. However, they are prepared to extend this if necessary. So the most important thing is then we decide how much you're going to get back. So number one, your employment contract doesn't change. You're still employed. The employer still has to pay the salary. So in some instances, the employer is going back to the employee and saying, I'd like to furlough you. I cannot pay you your salary because it's very high. However, would you take an agreement of £2,500? So if that happens, you need that in writing. You need to get agreement from the employee because HM Revenue and Customs will need those details when you claim back, i.e. the employer claims back, the monies on the furlough scheme. Now, the government have been quite generous because they say it will start on the 1st of March. So we're already a month through it if you did furlough someone on the 1st of March. They've also said that if you'd made someone redundant just before the 1st of March, you can reverse that if you want to furlough them to keep them on the books. So what happens then is that the employer will continue to pay the employee. He will deduct the normal um, tax and national insurance in the usual way and the employer will then recover the money from the government. So the government say that they're going to set up a, a portal and that portal will be the mechanism upon which the employer will be able to recover the monies. The government think that the portal will be open um, 
at about the end of the third week of this month, i.e. in April, and then the employer will be able to recover those monies then, and then on a monthly basis. So the employer will be able to then get up to a maximum of £2,500 back from the government. Now, there are, as with every, everything, some slight variations. So the government have been generous in other areas. They've said that the employer can also recover the employer's national insurance on the salary of up to £2,500. And if the employer makes an auto-enrolment pension payment, they will pay the minimum, minimum being 3%. So an employer could claim £2,500 plus employer's NI plus auto enrolment payment for each employee that has been furloughed. So with the furloughed people, they need to ensure they keep enough details such that they can justify this to the revenue when the portal is up and running. So from the employee's point of view, the employer needs a conversation with these people such that they agree that they can be furloughed and then they need to work through that with them. Um, if you are furloughed, then you can't claim statutory sick pay. So it, it's one or the other. Now, obviously, the larger the figure would be the furlough figure. The government have also said that if you are a director, you can furlough a director, but the director cannot do any duties. So if you are furloughed as a member of staff, you're not allowed to do any work whatsoever for that employer. A director can do the necessary duties as a director, but not any work for the company. The other thing to bear in mind is that if you are a furloughed employee, you may have two jobs. You may have one job for two days a week and one job for, say, three days a week. So one employer could furlough you and you're still allowed, allowed to work for the other employer. So you don't have to be furloughed by both employers and indeed your employer could remove you from furlough and put you back at a later stage. So he could furlough you for three weeks, you could come back for two weeks, then he could furlough you for another three weeks. So some people say to me, well, actually, I need that member of staff back at some stage well, as the minimum period is three weeks, you could furlough them for three weeks, as I say, then they can come back and do some necessary work for the company, i.e. they're back on the payroll but not furloughed, then you can put them back onto furlough for another minimum of three weeks, up to a maximum of up to the 31st of May. So that sort of gives you an idea how, how that would work. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. So keeping on the side of the, the government then, I suppose the next bit for the businesses to understand is um, the benefit that's being rolled out for VAT as well, Chris. Um, I believe there's some kind of deferment for VAT? Um, well, VAT, um, what you've got to bear in mind is there's a mixture of what the government have proposed between grants, deferment and loans. And in order of priori priorities, Obviously, the last out of those three you'd want to do is a loan because you have to repay it back. The, the first one is the, the grant, such as the job retention scheme, because you don't have to pay that back, but any monies you receive is taxable on the company. Therefore, if I receive £2,500 for the government for a furloughed employee, then that £2,500 is taxable on me as the employer. I don't have to repay it back, but it is taxable income in my accounts. With regards to VAT, that is just a, a deferral method. What it means is that any VAT registered business, they can defer the payment of their VAT for the period between the 20th of March 2020 and the 30th of June 2020. So what is important to note is that you must file your VAT return. So the VAT return gets filed in the normal way. What some firms do is when they file the VAT return, there's an automatic direct debit to pay the VAT. So it's very important that they cancel the direct debit because the direct debit otherwise will go out automatically. You want to stop that, and then what you can do is not pay the VAT that falls due between the 20th of March 2020, 30th of June 2020. However, that VAT does have to be paid before the 31st of March 2021. So that is just a deferral method. So it just helps you with the cash flow. And the most important thing 
as you may recall, I did two emails on the um, one day after um, the Chancellor had announced the main measures. So one was um, the measures that he announced on the 20th of March, and the other one was the measures that he announced on the 26th of March. And both of those are the major changes that form the basis of the emails we sent out to all the Wilkin South clients. So the VAT, like I say, must be paid by the 31st of March 2020. So it helps you with the cash flow to enable you to keep a bit more cash in the business, but with the knowledge that you will have to pay the VAT on 31st of March next year. So, uh, Chris, just on that, um, so you could end up with a very big bill uh, in March uh, that actually you were unable to pay. And I can see a lot of people having that problem. Uh, that deferment is just that it's deferring in some ways it's helping but at the same time is it not just deferring a problem um you're right i had a client that rang me today and he said and, and i said how how bad are things and he said well i've got all my hp payments coming up i'm going to have to take a bank loan to pay out the hp payments so i said well why don't you use the vat money that you're not paying to pay the HP payments, in which case you don't have to pay, pay a bank, like, take a bank loan out today. You might have to take it out in March, but that gives you nearly 12 months of not having to pay interest on that money. So use the money to your advantage. At the top of the email, I put turnover is vanity, profit is sanity, but cash is king. So we've got to keep on the cash because you may, it may not be that easy to raise the money now to convince a bank that you're going concern. So use the VAT money in the knowledge that you may have to take a loan at a later date, but it avoids you incurring interest for, say, 12 months. Do you think the HMRC would give people time to pay on that kind of larger bill? Do you think they'll be flexible? Well, that's a good point. There is something called the time to pay scheme. And what HMRC have done is they've actually set up a dedicated employer's helpline or time to pay helpline. And that number is 0800 0159559. So what that means is if you have any liabilities with HM Revenue and Customs, you can ring them up time to pay. And it's that nothing is in stone here, but you, as long as you explain the problem, then they will be quite helpful. However, there are sort of three main taxes we're looking at here, VAT, income tax and corporation tax. And the revenue you've already addressed something for VAT and income tax. If you can't pay the VAT in a year's time, then obviously you might want to consider time to pay then. Income tax, we might come on to later, but they've also made some assistance with then. But that too is just deferral. You will end up paying it at some stage. Okay. Uh, I think the message there is there's, there's measures, but these are deferments. And um, whilst they're, they're great and they can give us flexibility now, um, yeah, there will be a larger bill coming up. But with the sheer volume of people, I can, I can see that the likely scenario is that they will give a lot of people time to pay. But there's yeah. nothing, nothing guaranteed. Yeah. No. Okay. What's the next one? The next one's quite a big question and I think has only just been released really is to do with the self-employment income support. So how, how are the government helping out self-employed people? So um, the first thing is, um, it's, it's probably a bit obvious for me to say, but what is a self-employed person? And some people don't actually realise whether they're self-employed. So some people say that because I've got my own limited company, I'm a director of it, and I'm self-employed. But the literal definition of it is, do you have a self-assessment tax return, which you must have to be self-employed? And do you tick box two or box three on page TR2 of your tax return? So page two is a box for self-employed, page three is a box for partnership. So if for sake of argument, um, I have rental income, and that's my only income. I'm not self-employed. If I'm a director of a limited company, and that is my only income, I'm not self-employed. If I get dividends from my limited company, and that's my only income, I'm not self-employed. So you need to check that you actually fill out self-assessment tax return, and you tick either box two or box three on page TR2 of that self-assessment tax return, to see whether you're self-employed. So that's number one. 
Number two is whether you fall within the rules. So the rules are, um, do you have taxable trading profits? So important is it must be trading profits um, and they can't be more than 50,000 pounds in the year ended 5th of April 19. So there's two criteria. One, in the, so the tax year goes from the 6th of April 18 to the 5th of April 19. So number one, you must have filed your tax return. If you haven't filed your tax return, the revenue have given you four week extension. Now the tax return for the year ended 5th of April 19 should have been filed by the 31st of January 2020 and you should have paid your tax liability on 31st of January 2020. If you haven't done that, you've got four weeks to file that return. It will be late and there would be interest charged on a late paid tax, but you have until the 23rd of April to file that tax return. So that's number one. Then for the year ended 5th of April 19, are your trading profits less than £50,000 and do they constitute more than half your total taxable income? So say I'm self-employed plumber and my trading profits are £35,000, but I have £36,000 of other taxable income, then I wouldn't qualify because the majority of my income is not from being self-employed. Number two is if you don't fall, qualify with that one, is are your average trading profits for the last three tax years, that the year ended 5th of April 17, the year ended 5th of April 18, and the 5th of April 19, less than £50,000, and do those profits constitute more than half of your total taxable income? So you only have to qualify one out of those two items. If you do, then you've passed that hurdle as well. So that's another benefit. You will get 80% of your trading profits or £2,500, whichever is the lower. Also, it starts on the 1st of March for three months. So that's March, April, May. And the way the revenue will do it is they'll go back over your last three tax returns to work out what your average trading profits are. And the reason they're doing that is being self-employed, some people can have a very good year, one year they may have been ill and not been able to work as much. One year they might have had more holidays. So they average out over the last three years to work out what your monthly profit is. And out of those three years, that will give them the basis of what you will, would have earned in the three months ended 31st of May. And then they can work out what you're eligible to receive. And like I say, the most you can receive is £2,500. So... Some of the other criteria are that you must be trading in the year ended 5th of April 2020, other than the fact that it would only stop because of COVID-19, and you must plan to continue to be trading as a self-employed person in the year ended 5th of April 2021. So your intention is to continue being self-employed. So you've got to carry on doing that. Uh, you don't have to make any claim for HM Revenue and Customs. They will do the work and they will notify you. Now, that sort of gives me a concern because we've already received, seen a lot of fake and scam emails where people are saying um, to our clients, you're due a tax refund and the client rings me up and says, I don't think that's right. So, and, and there are a lot of scams like that. Now, what's happened is because the taxpayer knows that the inland revenue will be contacting them then what happens is that they may then be sucked in some more scams they've got to be really careful that they check any correspondence to the revenue to make sure it's not fake now the inland revenue say they will pay the monies in one lump sum in june and the reason it'll be in one lump sum is because that's after the date of the expiry of the three months because it starts on the first of march and finishes on the 31st of may so then the problem is Going back to the cash flow, people may not have the cash to last till June to pay their expenses. Now, the common th thought is that if you run out of money, then you should be able to approach your bank, tell them the circumstances and say, I'm likely to get some money from the Inland Revenue in June. Can you tide me over, please? Because I can't pay my expenses at the moment. And the idea is that the banks will be amenable to this because they know that you'll be receiving this money in due course. However, 
the Inland Revenue Aunt said, please don't contact us because it'll be too much work for us. We're trying to sort this out ourselves. So don't contact us, we'll contact you and let you know when the money is due. So you just got to be sort of bide your time. The problem is, is you won't have the cash in the intervening period, which I think will be very difficult for some businesses. Okay, so uh, Chris, you touched on there. That was very comprehensive. Uh, thank you. Uh, you just touched on there that it didn't affect um, the, uh, the, the, there's a large group of people who are directors of companies and uh, their own companies and then get paid uh, in dividends, uh, might claim, uh, get paid a uh, salary of uh, the minimum amount. And what has the Inland Revenue done for people in that uh, position? Well, um, that's quite a worrying thing at the moment because people are saying that they're the people that have fallen down the crack. Now, it may be that in that instance that their company isn't VAT registered, in which case they, work, they can't benefit from any VAT help. And in a lot of instances, these people, they may take a salary from the company below the PAYE threshold. So they haven't got a PAYE scheme. So they can't claim that they're employees of their own company because although they take a salary, they haven't got a PAYE scheme. And the most important thing about the job retention scheme is you've got to have a PAYE scheme and you must be an employee as at 28th of February. So that means that they wouldn't be able to claim on that either. So then there's a couple of things that come to mind. Number one, their company must have paid corporation tax because they've got to have distributable profits to pay a dividend. So they may want to avail themselves of the time to pay rules because they will owe corporation tax. So the corporation tax is paid nine months and one day after the end of the accounts. So they know when that is due. And what happens is that that liability is going to fall due nine months and one day after the, after the accounts year ends. So therefore, they could contact the revenue under the time to pay arrangements and ask for that to be delayed. The second thing is that if they've taken dividends, they're likely to have an income tax liability. And um, I don't know if you want me to cover it now, but there are help in income tax payments. So those people may be able to take advantage of the assistance for income tax as well, which I can come on to later. So that's two areas that may help them. The third thing is what the government has said is that if they've got um, they're in real financial problems, they would probably have a mortgage themselves, in which case they should approach their lender and the government has said that the lender should give them a three month holiday for the payment of interest. And they've also said that that shouldn't affect their credit rating. So if they are having real financial problems, they can um, delay the payment of corporation tax, they can delay the payment of income tax, and they should hopefully be able to delay the payment of their mortgages. Now, no, I'm saying delay in all of these. They will come round to be paid, but at the moment, we're hoping that if we can come out of this problem, then the businesses will pick up. If not, they may need to consider a loan at a future point in time, but just not at the moment. Do you expect the government to provide more relief to those group, that group of people? Well, if you think the first email I sent you was um, based on what the Chancellor said on Friday the 20th of March. Um, we had um, a, a board meeting uh, for which I attended and we discussed it then. By the Friday, he'd already changed a lot of these things and extended the rules. In fact, something like business rates, they're extending those to give more reliefs as we go along. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if more relief came along because the government said, money isn't a problem. We need to just help you get through this. I heard there's actually a petition being formed for just for these, this group of people. So I'm, I'm confident that there will be, but um, there's clearly, as you say, these guys have actually sort of fallen between the cracks, but let's go on to, the um, sorry. Sorry. Can I mention one thing? Yeah. Um, one thing that's quite ironic is that you may be aware that the government were proposing to change the IR 35 rules. And the IR35 are relating to personal service companies. 
So what that said is that, say I was a computer consultant for a large bank, um, what I would have then had is I would have invoiced my services through my limited company, and I'd be in exactly the situation that you just said. So what happened is that the government said that, that this IR35 legislation would start on the 6th of April 2020. So some of the large banks have actually said, well, we're going to make these people employees. Now, someone in that scenario, if they'd actually been made an employee by the 28th of April, they'd probably be smiling now, whereas before they, they would have fallen in exactly the situation you're talking about. Now, it subsequently transpires that the government have, have changed their mind and delayed the provision of IR35 for another 12 months. But there may be some winners and losers in this, even though in, unintentionally it happened. Okay, so uh, what about the? Should we go into income tax now? You, um, you've uh, what, what's what's happening there? Okay, so income tax. What happens is that I just explained earlier that my tax return for the year ended fifth of April, two thousand nineteen, has to be filed by the thirty first of January, twenty twenty. Now I then would have to pay the final payment of my tax bill for the year ended fifth of April, nineteen plus my first payment on account for the year ended 5th of April 2020 on the 31st of January 2020. My second payment for the year ended 5th of April 2020 falls due on the 31st of July 2020. So um, HM Revenue and Customs have said that that payment you don't have to pay on the 31st July 2020. You can defer that and pay it on the 31st of January 2021. So a bit like your VAT point where you said it, someone could have a very big VAT bill on the 31st of March 2021 because they would have deferred the payment that falls due in the present quarter. The same fall is the same comment for your income tax because on the 31st of January 2021, I'll pay on 31st July 2020. So that too would be a very large payment because it's more than you do usually expect. Okay, so again, there may be an issue where uh, people need to have a conversation at that time if they find that they're unable to pay it. So it is a deferment, it helps with cash flow, but fundamentally it's not, um, it needs to be planned for. It, it is, the only thing I would add is that come 31st of January 2021, I would also be making my first payment for my profits for the year ended uh, 5th of April 2021. And I've already had businesses contact me saying, can you do my accounts very quickly this year because it's gonna be a very bad year. So I, I will actually be making a lo much lower income tax payment. So the chances are people want their accounts done much sooner so they can reduce their income tax payment. Okay. Okay, what's There's next? <laughs> um, I suppose the other, the other things to look at really is probably the funding grants um, to the small business rates relief. Uh, I know a lot of small companies have been looking at this, the sizable uh, 10,000 pounds, I believe it's not for that. Would we be able to look at the criteria for that and who's, who's eligible really? Yeah. With the business rates, the government have already said for the year ended 5th of April 2021, that um, any business in the retail, hospitality or leisure section will get a business rates holiday. So they won't have to pay any business rates. Now, earlier Richard was saying, as do you think the uh, legislation will change? The government just this week have already said that that, that will be extended so that um, businesses that won't have to pay it um, in the retail sector are also going to be nurseries, estate agents and bingo halls. And I wouldn't be surprised if they extend it further. There's a long list. If you, uh, if you look at the, uh, something called the, um, the Business Rates Expanded Retail Discount 2021 Corona Re Response Legal Authority Guidance, <laughs> which I would recommend <laughs> as a, as a um, bed night reading, nighttime <laughs> reading, but it's, Pretty detailed. 
if you think you fall in it, have a look, have a look, and it will tell you what type of businesses fall in it, fall out of it. One of the things that did annoy me is it specifically said accountants don't fall in it. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> So you can, get the, you can get the relief from that. And also what you can do is that there is something called um, a retail hospitality grant scheme. Now, the grant scheme is a £25,000 grant per property and includes guest and boarding premises, self-catering accommodation, and not anything in the retail and hospitality sector. So you might want to look at that before. If not, you can get a direct grant for small businesses. And the small businesses is ones that fall under the small business rate relief scheme um, or the rural rate scheme, and they can be up to £10,000. Now, in both of those instances, you don't have to reply. A bit like with um, the self-employed allowances, um, in this case, it's the local authority that will contact you, and they will let you know whether you fall into that scheme and they'll write to you. So you don't physically have to do anything to be in that. Now, if you don't hear from them, you might want to then find out why not if you think you fall in it. But I suggest you read the, the business rates legislation first just to see if you've got a fighting chance of getting in that scheme. Okay, so um, on that point, uh, the local one to us is in Bournemouth. Um, I have recently received an email uh, last night from them to say that they're doing their forms online so that businesses can log on online directly with the council and that the council have already received the funding and are able to make payment within seven days. So if any of the businesses are from uh, the Bournemouth region, there is an online portal there for them. So yep. if businesses with up to a rateable value of 51,000 pounds can qualify for that, it's unlimited for the retail hospitality scheme. So that's that's very relevant to our uh, our office uh, members uh, in Bournemouth. Uh, that's going to be something that's going to be vital to to, to small businesses that uh, are are um, because that, that's not a deferment payment. That a that's grant. That effectively is yeah. free money. Yeah. Which is good news. <laughs> yes. Definitely in these we, times. We like free money. <laughs> Okay. I suppose the last one, which is, which is the big one that is being pushed at the moment, is the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme. Obviously, this isn't free money. It does have a small benefit. Um, would you be able to go over that with us at all? Yeah, I mean, um, this is basically, um, given the choices, this is bottom of my list because, A, it's a loan. What you've got to bear in mind is that um, the banks are commercial entities, so people think that um, the banks are only liable for 20% because the government guarantees 80%. But it doesn't quite work that way. The way the scheme works is the government have told the banks, and I think there's the um, 41 largest banks they've contacted, so some of the smaller what banks aren't involved. But what they've basically said is that you need to satisfy yourself that it's a viable entity. And you need to ensure that if the loan is not repaid, that you take all measures to recover the monies. So basically, the banks are looking at it like they would lend in the normal way. The trouble is, is what is a commercial entity in this environment? Because you might say that most of the business in the country are probably not, um, are not going concerns because they can't meet their debts as they fall due. So... A, they're having a bit of a problem, and you'll see in some instances that um, people have said the banks are asking for personal guarantee, they're asking for security. Now, in the paper, um, RBS said that we're not going to ask for personal guarantees. I don't know how many others have, but um, you, you see a lot of it, which may be anecdotal, but the banks are saying, look, if you've got this much security in your property or you've got a second property, I want to take a charge on it. What you'll also find is where the government have said that the first 12 months will be interest free. This, this scheme can go up to six years for the loan, but the interest then goes up skyrocketing. I've heard interest rates between eight, between 19 and 30% that some of the banks want to levy. 
So you've got to be really careful what you're getting into for these things. And I don't think it's going to be a walk in the park to get the money. I think it'll be very hard. There may be a lot of security given. It may ask for personal guarantees. And at the expiry of that, they'll have very high interest rates. So people need to be really careful. So what I would be doing is I would take advantage of much of this government free money available, as much as the money that can be deferred as possible. So basically you're kicking the can down the road with the hope that if we come out of this, there may be a chance that you may have a good trading period to help you to reduce the size of the loan you may need in January or say March, i.e. when the income tax or the VAT is due next year. Because what you've got to do is make sure you conserve this. You don't want to get yourself into big liability with interest payments over another six years. Well, thank you very much for that. That's uh, very sensible advice. I mean, it's something that we're definitely going to be following down here in Bournemouth anyway, from our side of things. Yeah, we're definitely going to track the uh, the options there on the on the loans. I've seen some some uh some reports of some very high interest rates after the initial first year and obviously um i i'm not sure how that's gonna pan out but i think yeah that's that is that is is definitely an area that people should uh only go into if they are sure that they can get off those loans um, and don't want to saddle themselves with a, a sort of a mill around their neck um further down the track. Um, great. Anything else? Yeah, can I mention a couple of other things? Um, one, if things get really bad, um, the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, have already told lenders, I'm thinking about um, credit cards, personal loans, things like that, to be lenient. They've said that you, you cannot chase people um, for this stage, um, for monies. We've had, um, we've been told about electricity companies that said that they're going to suspend debt collections. The local council here in Southwest London have said that they won't be chasing for rates, uh, that's business rates or um, uh, any expenses on personal properties. So I think people are trying to help you. So don't, ha don't go and pay things if you don't have to, just conserve your cash. So just to say it again, cash is king. Make sure you keep as much as possible because no one knows how long this is going to last for. Brilliant. Thank you for that advice. Good advice. Yeah. Anything else? Well, there's loads, but <laughs> how much detail do you want? <laughs> I could go back into that business rates manual. That would be a nightmare for you. <laughs> no, I, I think I think we probably. I tell you what would be quite interesting is if any of the questions that come out of this, uh, we can feed it back, and we can maybe. Uh, I, I'm, I'm expecting um, that they're going to be releasing new release. Uh, certainly, at the moment, they're talking about potential lockdown for three to six months. Um, when they when they released all this information, uh, it, they weren't talking talking. Uh, and uh, any sort of time frame, any close to that, I think, um, I think there's going to be more, more news. So it would be great if we can come and do uh, an update uh, when new information comes out. Yeah, sure, happy to. Great, fantastic. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Andy. Pleasure. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for the advice. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Bye.